Mel Kuyper Jr. is here. Look at Kayvon Thibodeau trying to take our jobs. Back off, young man. Play some football first. We, we need these jobs. Uh, Mel here to talk about Kayvon and other NFL stars on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, so let's start with Thibodeau, because when you look back at the start of last season, the Oregon defensive end, he has fluctuated throughout the top ten in many of your mock drafts. Right now, a week out, you have him going fourth overall to the Jets. Why, Mel, has it been so tough to assess where Kayvon Thibodeau might end up? Saves everybody's all over the place on Kayvon Thibodeau. You cannot build a consensus. You really can't. Talk to people. You get confused on where he may go. Some say two. Some say he could drop out of the top ten. Well, why? Because there's some really good with Kayvon Thibodeau. You talk about that initial quickness, that get off. It's unmatched at the defensive end spot. The power, the strength, inside and outside, unmatched. What does he need to work on? He's got to get more bend off the edge if he can. He's a little stiff, get more bend, and also work on some more pass rush moves. Defensive line coach will have a lot to do with what type of pro Kayvon Thibodeau becomes, but certainly uh, the obviously the ascension of Trayvon Walker up into the top group, Aiden Hutchinson, even Jermaine Johnson II has worked to push maybe Kayvon Thibodeau down just a bit, Sage. We, we had him on the show a couple of months ago, and what a what a fine young man and that, that chess mind of his. I think it is going to be fun to watch how he applies that at the next level. Uh, of course, he's fluctuated in your mocks, as you've said, but how about Georgia defensive end Trayvon Walker? He has skyrocketed. Right now you have him going third overall to Houston. Why has he been rising up those draft boards so quickly? A combination of things, Sage. First of all, you had a lot of hurries. Then many sacks. Only had nine and a half career sacks, if you can believe it. Only 13 career tackles for loss. Well, other guys had triple that number that went in the top five. But the combine workout, the measurables, Got people back to the tape, and they said, well, the scheme prevented that. He still got into the backfield. He was disruptive, and we can put him in the right spot, maximize all that talent, coach him up, get him to use his hands a little bit better, okay? We got a 6'5", 270-pounder, runs 4'5", in verticals, almost 36, and he's got a great attitude, great approach. So that's why he's ascended up into the top three. Is it a little high? For me, it is, okay. based on the lack of production. If you haven't done it against the AOGs, I call them, and other occupation guys, how are you going to do it against the best in the world? Somebody's going to roll the dice that he can. Yeah, I'm, a lot of people are watching him. He, he wasn't even listed as a betting option when Caesars first posted odds and number one overall pick. Now he's got the second best odds, plus 150 to, be, to go first overall only behind Aiden Hutchinson at minus 170. So Mel Kuyper Jr. with the insight, the draft exactly seven days away and counting. We can't wait. Thank you, Mel.